Hey everybody, this is Mike. Welcome back to the Z Motorsports shop and channel for Saturday shop tour number six. So we're gonna be doing, I'll take you around and show you some projects that I got going on here in the shop today. Um, to start off with, I wanna show what I worked on last Saturday in last week's video, number five, the uh, axle fixture. I was able to get it welded up the other night. So it's all put together, um, bolted to the fixture. Um, Fully adjustable for width, lock the thumb screws down. A um, couple of comments have been made over on Garage Journal about the pinion. Um, I haven't, I, I, at this point, I don't think I have a need to hold the pinion up. Uh, most of the time, when I lower, a when I pull an axle out from underneath a vehicle, I set it down on jack stands and then raise the vehicle up away. Some of them will shift, some of them don't. Kind of depends on how they're balanced, front to rear of the axle with bracketry and so forth. I mainly wanted this to support the weight of the axle so I can raise it up in standing versus laying on my back. And I can put a couple of bolts in it and then grab the pinion yoke and move it as need be to get the other bolts in. And then I can lower this down out of the way and finish bolting everything up. So that's really the only thing this was for. This was not to work on or any, hold anything rigid. It was just to support the weight of an axle, raising and lowering it out from under a car, Jeep, vehicle, whatever. So anyway, this, this uh, turned out pretty good actually. So um, we'll see this in action here today. Cause I'm gonna move on to what I'm gonna work on today. Project or projects for today. Um, let me preface a little bit. I wanna talk about my uh, suspension on my Jeep. When I first built this Jeep in 2011, it is a 2011, I bought it late 2011, it had 3,000, no, 3,200 miles on it. So I bought it, it was stock. Um, I lifted it, put 35s on it, uh, re-geared it, all that good stuff. Did a few little minor custom touches here and there. And then I've driven it and wheeled it, towed it all over Western US, up into Canada, behind our motorhome. It's been great, loved every bit of it. When I did the suspension on it, I knew I was going to be building it and altering it. So I put a four and a half inch BDS um, long arm suspension under it. I know people are probably saying that three and a half inches, or excuse me, 35s, four and a half inches is a bit much. But I knew I was gonna be loading it up heavy with bumpers, winch, toolbox, etc. I don't have a lot of armor underneath it because I'm not a big armor fan, but I knew I was going to be loaded up heavy over the years. And, and, it, and I did. Over the years, it, it dropped a little bit. But when I did that lift kit, I put on what is called JKS ACOS. Um, many of you may be familiar with these. They're, a, they're basically an ACOS. is an adjustable coilover spacer, ACOS. And what they do is you cut the lower portion of the bumps or the jounce stop bucket off these slid up over that tube into position and provide some adjustability for weight changing my thinking was is I'm going to be changing this thing quite a bit over the first year or two and I wanted to have that adjustability that being said looking back on it I don't think I'd do that again for a couple of reasons Number one, I only changed the adjustment one time. In, in uh, eight years, 102,000 miles now, I changed it one time. And many of you might be thinking when I did the LS swap, that's not when. It, the LS swap changed it, the ride height, zero. Um, when I did it was when I built my rear, because I, I, I added, my, my built my bumper, put my worn 9.5 uh, winch on it, everything. That didn't really change it much. When I put my, when I built my rear bumper, my rear tire carrier, and put my tools in the back, that dropped my back end on the BDS spring significantly. So from there, I went to old, uh, OME, Old Man Emu Springs. I heard good things about them. And it kicked it back up, but it kicked it up a little higher than what it, the front was. And so I adjusted the front spacers down, which therefore put the front end up about three eighths. It wasn't much. It was like three eighths of an inch to get, to, to get the nose just a slight elevation over the rear. And that's where it's been for the last seven years and probably 
90,000 miles. So looking back, I don't think I would do that again. I think I would put the proper springs under it and if needs be a spacer and call it good. So that being said, I'm pulling the ACOS out and I'm putting in some metal cloak, four and a half inch dual, true duals under it. And that's what I'm going to be, um, that's what I'm going to be installing in it. The caveat is when I put the ACOS on, I cut the jounce cups off on the JKs, they're welded on. So um, I, I, I ended up getting some TJ ones that are bolt on, so I'll end up putting those in place and be able to run uh, OEM jounce stops, but I'm gonna run the metal cloak uh, Durospring um, microcellular ones anyway. So that's the order of today. I'm gonna drop the axle out from underneath my Jeep. I'm gonna pull the ACOS so, like out. like I said, the rear end started to sag a little bit when I loaded it up. I went to Old Man Emu Springs run those for a very short time. I did not care for the, they had a little more harsh ride. They give me the lift, but they also was a little bit more harsh of a, of a harsh of a ride and it didn't flex the way I wanted it to. So then I switched over a couple years ago to Curry four and a half inch springs, but I went with their Expedition Springs because they would give, they were designed for Jeeps carrying weights such as rooftop tents, refrigerators, that type of stuff. So. I put those in and, and they've worked out fair, but they still sagged more than I liked. So I run those until I went with the 37s. And when I put the 37s on, I went with the metal cloak, uh, four and a half inch, no, excuse me, five and a half inch in the rear. And it sagged me down to about four and a quarter inches, of lift, four and a quarter, four and a half inches of lift. And that's pretty much where it's sitting right now with no spacers, no adapters. That's just the springs. And I love the way the thing rides and it flexes out nice in the back. I, I, I don't, I'm not in, I'm not into my bump stops like I, like I was. I like that. So that's pushed me to go with the metal cloak dual rates front. So I'm putting those in and doing away with the ACOS and pulling all that out and Again, that's what I'm gonna be working on today. So let's uh, go into the Jeep and see if I can get these things off. Now, I, I'll also say that when I put these on back in 11, um, I and I seized the crap out of the tube that comes down where the ACO slides over. So I'm hoping they come off fairly easy. Um, like I said, they've been on there for 100,000 miles now in eight years. I keep, I don't hit a lot of mud. I keep the underneath pretty clean, but we live in northern Utah here and there is potential for rust so I hope they come off pretty decent. So let's get this thing up in the air and try out the new axle fixture and pull the springs out and pull the ACOS so, out. So after uh, probably about 45 minutes of working at this um, I got the ACOS, uh, the adjustable coilover spacer, the ACOS off finally off of the uh, pedestal here so, this one, this one wasn't too bad. I've been going back and forth and I can't even budge the other side yet. But this side, um, once I was able to get the bolt removed, um, once I was able to get the bolt remo or re removed out of this, I was able to work, get a uh, pair, big pair of channel locks on the collar here and work it. And it finally, I kept spraying some croil up in there but I was finally able to get it loose. And I did anti-seize all this when I put these on back in 2011. So I've had them on for eight years now, 100,000, over 100,000 miles. And I did anti-seize the hell out of this, plus put some inside the ACOS before I slid this on and fastened it. But they pretty much, I mean, they haven't been removed in that long. This one with a little bit of persuasion come right off. I cannot get that other one off to save my neck. So I got a funny feeling I'm going to try some heat. If not, I'm going to have to put a slit in it and relieve that, release that and uh, pop it off. But anyway, I got the passenger side off at least. Um, I guess I'll go around and work some more at the driver's side. So this side. one is no dice. I, this thing will not even budge. Um, I was able to get the actual bump stop off and the bottom collar, um, but the unit itself is not budging. So 
Rather than fight it anymore, these things are pretty much destroyed. Rather than fight it anymore, I was hoping maybe I could save them. But I'm going to pull this collar off and I think I'm probably going to have to put a relief. When I, was, when I was working on it earlier, I could get up underneath, I could see some silver, like anti-seize, coming out from the top. So I think the, I think the top half is probably okay. But right down here, where I'm looking through here, it's rusted solid. So I'm going to try to pull this collar off, and then I may have to put a relief cut and expand that, be able to get it off. But I think that's my next course of action here. Um, this thing just doesn't want to budge. So I think this is going to be my next way to attack this. I run the collar down to the very bottom so it was below the uh, tube, sprayed some more penetrant in there, sprayed some more penetrant up inside of here, and got after it with a pipe wrench. And lo and behold, <coughs> I got it loose. Hope that shows up. You can see that I got it loose. So now I just need to drive it down and off. Try turning it a little bit while I... There we, there we go. Bingo. Oh, that was a nightmare. But it's off. So there's the, the ACOS threaded cup or cone, whatever you want to call it, adapter. So now I'll come in and clean all this up, um, get some paint on it, and get ready to accept the new isolator and uh, uh, metal cloak spring. And then I need to um, clean up the bottom here because I've got some other, they're basically the TJ. Let's see, the TJ, LJ, JK, ZJ, and I believe even the new JLs take the same jounce, uh, jounce stop in there. Where the JKs are welded on, and I had to cut them off in order to put the ACOS on, the TJs and the LJs are a bolt-on cup. So I've ordered a couple replacement bolt-on cups, so I should be able to bolt that cup right up to this, reach down through the top here and bolt it right on. That, will, that way it will accept an OEM style of jount stop. But I went ahead and went with the new metal cloak um, Duro springs, I think is what they're called. They're a microcellular uh, urethane, basically, that has different variations inside. So as the jount stop is being compressed, it has a soft initial then a little bit um, more resistant middle, and then a very resistant last stage. And it's all done through just microcellular urethane technology, where it's no moving parts, nothing to wear out, no maintenance. Um, I've heard good things about them. Uh, I have not used those in the past before, so I'm going to go ahead and go okay, with those ones. So there's everything painted up and cleaned up and ready to bolt the uh, jounce cups in place and then assemble springs and put this thing together. Set it down, measure, make sure we're sitting good. And uh, here's all the there. parts I've removed. Again, these are my BDS coils. Um, I only had the old man, the OME coils in for a very short time. These are my back to my four and a half inch BDS coils, but they had sagged. And so I had these adjusted to provide about, I think it was about an inch of lift. It was, it was almost at the minimum setting. But these were, this, the passenger side wouldn't come off pretty decent like you saw in the, in the video there. The driver's side was the one I was really fighting. And here's the bump stop side machine. So I don't think I'm going to run the re retainers that I fabricated because the new metal cloaks are a dual rate. So they have a built-in um, stackable coil set at the top that provides more um, pressure to keep them seated. So I'm not going to run those. I'm just going to run the uh, actual, actually the Synergy um, stackable 
bump stop okay, adapters. Okay, with the paint completed, um, I'm going to show you what, what parts I'm going to be using here and hopefully you'll kind of see how the uh, plan is going to come into uh, fruition here. So as you notice when I pulled those JK, when I pulled these buckets down, actually they went on like that, this was the old bump stop and that's pretty solid. That's hard rubber, mounts like that, sat like that. So dropping off of a ledge, even though I try to control it with the brakes coming down with about four and a, a little over four inches, four and a half, four and a quarter, four and a half, can't remember which, inches of up travel, as that would come down, it would impact that and it would, it would send a jar all the way through to the, uh, to the passengers and that jar also can't be good for the components. So there needs to be more flex in there. So originally I was going to put the JKS um, hydraulic down stops that go up and fit, they basically has a piece that takes the place of this, threads onto there, and then they thread into it. However, it's another maintenance item because they're hydraulic jounce stops, so it is another hydro uh, maintenance item that needs to be maintained down the road. I'm trying to keep this as low maintenance. This isn't a desert racer. Um, but I wanted to be able to control and cushion that, give it a little extra cushion. However, when you put these JKS ACOS, um, adjustable coilover spacers on, you basically, in essence, have to cut the jounce cup off of the tube, which is what I had done. So they say these are irreversible. But what I've done is I've bought TJ, so it'd be a 2000, or it'd be a 1997 through a 2006 Wrangler, TJ or LJ. I bought the replacement for them because they bolt on and they're the same basic, they're the same basic cup, only on the JKs they're welded on, the TJs they're bolted on, and these will accept the factory JK jump stops. That would sit up in like, uh, about like so. So you'd have maybe inch and a half, inch and three quarter, inch and three quarter sticking out from underneath that. So that, that would be a factory setup up inside the springs. Well, where I cut mine off, I have to add these on. And then I'm also, which these are a crown, but they're basically an OE replacement. But instead, I'm gonna use these metal cloak um, microcellular bump or jounce stops. So these have, uh, these are progressive uh, microcellular like a like an air spring if you will inside so this will compress and it still fits up inside of the factory it'll sit up in about like that basically this ring right here will sit flush with the cup and provide the extra bit of cushion there that deceleration as you're coming down so like I said I don't pre-run this I don't bah hot but it's just on the whoops a little bit. I've bumped, I've come up against my, my bump stops a little bit and more, and more, more frequently come up, like just, just easing over a, a, a ledge or a drop off is where it comes down and it hits them. I wanna be able to slow that deceleration down. But like I said, I don't want all the, all the uh, upkeep maintenance, routine maintenance and so forth of a hydraulic jounce stop. So here's the rear ones. Here's the front ones of the metal cloaks. You can see the rears are a little bit bigger. If you ordered this for a TJ setup, you'd basically get four of them like this. But for the JK and the JL, I believe also, the new Jeeps take the same ones. You'll get this one for the rear, this one for the front. So those are gonna be installed. And more importantly, here is my new um, metal cloak, four and a half inch coils. They're a 22 and a half inch free length. Um, so that's going to give me my lift. Actually, these are closer to 22 and a half, but the advertised height is 21 and a half. No, I think it is 22 and a half. I take that back. I take that back. I believe it is 22 and a half. And that's exactly what they're coming in at. Um, so these are the four and a half inch metal cloaks. These are the four and a half inch BDS. So you can see there's a good four inches probably difference there. Yeah, pretty much four inches, three and three quarter, three and seven eighths. So um, these are, a, the, the BDS ones are a linear rate, meaning they're, they're, they're the same spacing, same pitch, same wrap. Whereas the, the uh, metal cloaks are a dual rate, meaning this first section up here is gonna stack up 
And basically, it's going to become, when you're going down the road, it's going to become a linear rate because these are going to stack up under ride height. But when you flex out, that's when this upper coil separates to keep the springs seated in the upper bucket and down on the axle. So they're, they're, not, a, they're not what you'd call a progressive spring, but they are a dual rate, meaning they have this upper section that stacks up. So these are going to be installed along with these jounce cups and the metal cloak jounce. And then here's just the, the OEM isolators that'll go up in the, uh, um, these will sit basically just like that up inside of the bucket so you not have, don't have the spring sitting right on against the metal uh, coil tower. Coil spring Echos tower. were eight inches from the top of the hat there down into the bottom. This measures eight and a half. So it gives me a half inch more, but this is a progressive dampening. So I shouldn't have to mess with my, my stack down here on the axle. So I had three inches down here below. So I'm, that's what I'm gonna start out with. Now, taking that into consideration, this is a Dynatrack Pro Rock housing, Pro Rock 44 housing. They already are 880 thousandths shallower than a OEM uh, Dana 44 housing. So these have an eight, when, when you buy these, they actually come with a just under an inch. It's like 900 thousandths spacer, and that puts it back to factory. So then any bump stop you have, you put above that. So I, I, I've got, I had two, two inches originally of bump stop, so I put three inches total, and that's the way I've been running it, and it keeps it up out of my fender, but I did have to, um, I think on one of my other videos, I showed where I had to trim my front bumper a little bit. But I'm not contacting my frame. When I built my lower control arm links, I bent a kick in them so that I could clear because I knew eventually I wanted to go to 37s. So I've cleared all that. So I'm going to stick with the same size bump stops, but this should give me a progressive dampening right here. The JKS hydraulic jounce stops or hydraulic bump shocks, I think is what they call them. I don't know about Kings, but I know Terraflex and JKS both have a two inch travel. This is going to have, by the time it's all said and done, one and three quarters to two inch. So pretty close to what their travel is, only by not using um, hydraulic oil or air or nitrogen. These are just going to use kind of a, these are just using basically microcellular air sacs in here to control it. They're progressive. So I should get, I don't know that I'm going to get as good a performance as a hydraulic. I, I know I'm not going to get as good a performance as a hydraulic but I'm not doing it for high speeds. I'm just doing it for dropping over those ledges and that sudden impact. I want to be able to have something that's going to be progressive and not give that harsh jar like I had before. I had four, I think it was four and a quarter or four and a half inches of up travel before, but when that stack on my axle housing met up with that hard rubber, it was solid. It was right now. It stopped dead. Whereas this, once it hits it, it will have an inch and three quarters inch or so of progressive dampening. So I may have to add just a little bit. I'm, now that I'm thinking about it, I may have to add just a little bit to my bottom um, stack to compensate for that. But it will be progressive at least. So, um, okay, got all that done. Now we're ready to stab in the metal cloak. Um, Four and a half inch coils. And my limiting strap on the bottom side is uh, catching. There we go. Slide that up ever so slightly. And. Grab a little pry bar. Raise up, raise up on that, just to get it over that uh, little perch there. There we go. Okay, now rotate. It around. So. Okay, so there's the lower one, and then I just insert another one. Um, I'll do this once I get it down even. Uh, I'll just take a pry bar, and you reach up in there and pop them into place. And uh, I got a funny feeling I'm probably going to be at least, I might have to add an inch, because like I said, 
the OEM, I was at two inches on the OEM axle, but the JK, or excuse me, the Dynatrack Pro Rock 44 housing is 880 thousandths machine down less. So you have, you're already at a deficit of 880 thousandths. So that's why I had a three inch, well, I think it was like two and seven, eight spacer in there. So if I put three in here, three inch in here now, it'll be equivalent to a two inch factory axle. So I probably will end up putting that third one in because I've got a little more up travel with this uh, um, compressible bump stop now. So anyway, uh, this is pretty much it on this. I'm going to start reassembling my axle and check right okay, height. Before I forget, there's one other thing I want to do here real quick. Um, these are made by um, Slick Rock Gear, I believe. They're called JK Pockets. The netting on the JKs is a dismal attempt at storage. So I went ahead and bought a set of these to try to do away with that. Um, I just think they look tacky and these look a lot nicer. I didn't get the carbon fiber ones. I actually just got the, the black molded ones so it looks more like the door material even though I have tan down at the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these in real quick. So here you can see how poorly these are. These are just, these are just a joke. Uh, whoever designed that, I don't know what they were thinking, but these just look like crap. They look tacky. So these will actually go in there. The wife's side's even worse. She used to put her phone in there. And then the last couple of times, it would actually, the door would sag this down to where it would get caught in the door jam. And I thought she broke her phone the one time. That's when, about a year ago, and when I went through and did the dash bar and put her phone, got a 67 design phone holder for her, for her phone. But, I've been wanting, looking at these for a while, and I finally broke down and bought a set. So you just go in here and cut these as close, pull them and pull, cut them as close as you can. And then these just snap pull into place. as tight as you can. And try to cut it to where you don't cut the... You don't want to cut the door panel, you just want to, and this is irreversible, so... Once you cut these, you're not uh, gonna put the netting back, that's for sure. When you get all the netting out, and then these just kind of pop into place. There we go. There we go, and that's, that pocket's in. Different vision here. It's really no easy way to finesse these kind of have to muscle that in there but once it's in there it's in there and it fits into the little molded indentations so much better and definitely nicer looking than that netting so I'll do the other three now and then this is going to be okay, ready for the road test. Okay that uh, pretty much concludes this uh, Saturday shop project so um just got back from road test, everything looked good. I did have to tweak my drag link just a slight little bit because it did pick the front end up about three eighths of an inch from where it was. Um, but overall, I think you can tell the stance is awesome. Um, I don't have really many miles on it yet. I just went around my test loop here around our uh, couple mile loop here around some neighborhoods that I put through its paces on. It rides good. Um, I think maybe tomorrow the wife and I might take off and go for a drive and te test it out off-road. Uh, so basically that uh, pretty much does the... Uh, so now I'm running metal cloak suspension front and rear as far as springs. I still have my fabricated control arms, but I'm running metal cloak dual rate four and a halfs in the front and five and a halfs in the rear, along with metal cloaks. Um, Duro spring, I think is what they call them. They're microcellular urethane bump stops. So I, de I definitely want to go out and put it up against the bumps. I did end up adding three quarters of an inch of bump spacers to the bottom to compensate for the give that will be in these bump stops, or jounce stops rather, compared to the solid rubber ones that I had on before. So hopefully that, when, they, when, you when it comes up upon those, it'll decelerate and it won't be that harsh, abrupt, um, impact coming off of a ledge or down off of a drop off, but which is what I wanted to minimize on. That's hard on suspension components. That's hard on the passengers. It's hard all the way around. So that's the whole point of this is I wanted to mitigate that um, that 
harsh, abrupt uh, impact with those uh, bump so, stops. So thank you for following along. Um, I appreciate you watching. Give me a thumbs up if you like it. I appreciate the comments.